will be welcoming Paul Shapiro. Paul Shapiro is the Vice President of Farm Animal Protection for the Humane Society of the United States, the founder of and former, investi former undercover investigator and uh, former, former undercover investigator and campaigns director for Compassion Over Killing, and an inductee into the Animal Rights Hall of Fame. Please welcome Paul Shapiro. It's like a battery cage up in here. There's people on the ground and around the perimeter. So if you have a seat that's open next to you, raise your hand. All you guys in the back, look at all these empty seats. You could be sitting. Really, none of you come on forward. All right. All right, we got people coming forward. If you have a bag next to you, that doesn't count as having a full seat, by the way. I try that on planes all the time. All right. Um, so I'm grateful to all of you for coming. I want to say thank you for everything that you're doing for animals. First and foremost, so many of you donate so much of your time to animals. Many of you donate your money to animals. But there are two people in this room today who have gone above and beyond and donated their genetic material to the animal movement. I want to say thank you to my parents, Larry and Joel. <laughs> Actually, prefer to be in cages in a type of Orwellian manner. 
It made me think about what Upton Sinclair, the author of The Jungle, said when he famously noted that it's very difficult to get a person to understand something that his salary depends on him not understanding. And so I started wondering, what are these people like? These are our adversaries. It's us versus them. What are they like? Are they evil people? Or are they just people who are engaged in doing really horrible things? And so I spent the next couple days at this conference getting to know them, learning about them, their families, their stories, their businesses, telling them about my background too. And I started realizing that maybe they weren't as evil and monolithic as I had perceived them to be when I went out there. And so I maintained some of these relationships over the years with several of the people who I met at that conference. I'm going to put this story on pause for you. We'll get to the end of it in a few minutes. And now flash forward several years to another story. About four years ago, I was sitting at my desk at the Humane Society of the United States. My phone call, my phone rang. I pick it up, and it's a guy who has a rural accent, and he tells me he's a cattle rancher from Nebraska. Oh, great. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy calling to yell at me, get in line. <laughs> and he tells me he saw me quoted in the local paper about gestation crates and how cruel they are. Like, All right, guys, here we go. Gestation crates, tell me why they're good. <laughs> but to his surprise, he told me he agreed. That he thought that gestation crates were horrible. And he started telling me how he thought that chicken farms resembled more like concentration camps in his view. And I thought, my like, God, oh, this is this cattle rancher from Nebraska talking like this? That's a bold statement to make. And so I started talking with him more. He told me his name was Kevin Fulton. He told me his background. He said, you know, you and I probably shouldn't even be talking. I'm a cattle rancher. You're a vegan. <laughs> okay, well, you called me. <laughs> so we keep on talking, and we became pretty friendly. And I told him I wanted to enlist him in our campaign, sort of powerful voice, somebody who's in the industry saying that he thinks that what they're doing is an abomination, to use his term. After all, he said, you know, look, maybe some people think we don't agree on anything. I think we agree on 99%. That's what he told me. So, all right. Well, so I started asking him if he would be willing to be a spokesperson for going around the country condemning factory farming, and he said, in his words, quote, hell yes. <laughs> so fast forward now a couple of years after this, he's already been giving speeches, condemning factory farming, doing interviews, and HSU has been doing a lot of undercover investigations of factory farms and slaughter plants. And, well, what's the response from the meat industry to our exposés? As you all know, it's not to try to prevent animal abuse from occurring. They want to prevent people from finding out about that animal abuse in the first place. So they introduced ag-gag bills to try to silence us, to prevent whistleblowing. And that bill came to Nebraska. So here we are, an ag-gag bill in Nebraska. And Nebraska is one of the toughest states for our movement. In the Nebraska legislature, HSUS is a four-letter word. <laughs> These guys really don't like us. And in fact, the, the then governor of Nebraska famously declared that he's going to, quote, kick HSUS's ass out of the state. <laughs> the sitting governor of the state he said that. And so we needed to kill this ag gag bill. Nebraska is a very important state. It's a huge pork production state, a big egg production state. What are we going to just have no more whistleblowing exposés in such an important state? So how are we going to kill this bill? And we thought, what are we going to do? Send somebody like me, a vegan Jew from Washington, D.C., <laughs> to Nebraska to testify against this bill? I value my life. <laughs> so I called Kevin up. And I said, hey, man, we got a bill in Nebraska. You think you can go testify against it? And he was eager to do it. So I didn't fly out there. I watched it remotely online. And I watched him endure the abuse of these lawmakers, these senators all coming at him. And he sat there as a Nebraska cattle rancher talking about how horrible ag gag is for both animals and for agriculture. And he went on, and guess what? That ag gag bill never became an ag gag law. <laughs> ago, the Animal Legal Defense Fund did its own undercover investigation in Nebraska of a pig factory showing absolutely horrendous abuse, and they have Kevin Fulton to thank for helping kill that ag-gag bill. And so when I think about that, when people talk about getting to know our adversaries, the title of this panel, I have to ask, our, I have to ask myself and I ask our movement, what do we want? Do we want to be so exclusive that we want, what do we want, a social club or do we want a social movement? So insular as a movement that we demand purity rather than 
been applauding progress? I thank you. Thank you. I think about that. Are we so orthodox that we refuse to applaud somebody's progress and instead punish them for not yet taking their last steps? Yeah. I think there are some people who may like that, but I think most people in the movement want to be effective. They want to recognize that animals don't need us just to be right. You know what? If being right were enough, we wouldn't even need this. We would have been done so long ago. It's so easy to stand up and be self-righteous and declare what you think is the truth and that these people are horrible for doing what they're doing and you're the only righteous one, you and your little circle of friends. But guess what? Animals don't need us just to be right. They need us to be both right and effective. And oftentimes, being effective means we're working with anyone who can help us win for animals. that first story about these egg producers who 15 years ago declared that it was impossible for the egg industry to ever stop using battery cages. We are waging this crusade saying empty the cages. For so long, for decades, the animal movement had been decrying the battery cages, the emblematic image of factory farming. And yet today, after undercover investigations, corporate campaigns, legislative campaigns, litigation campaigns, those same executives, not just their companies, literally the same exact people who many of us have had relationships with now for 15 years, they no longer say that getting rid of battery cages is impossible. Today, they say it is inevitable. <laughs> These are just people. We talk about getting to know our adversaries. They are just people. They're frail. Feeble people just like I am and just like you are. Yeah. They're fallible, they're flawed, but they don't necessarily want to go out and do evil in the world. You know, Gandhi talked about how it's important not to bring our enemies to their knees, but to their senses. I'm all for trying to wage these crusades and force changes for animals. That's what I do for my living and my entire life. At the same time, we should recognize that these are just people, and we can talk to them. And we can try to find some common ground. Sometimes we can find common ground enough that we can say we agree to agree. And that we can make things happen for animals. That is what I think about when I think about getting to know our adversaries. Is respecting them enough to show them the courtesy of figuring out who they are as people. It's so easy to demonize somebody who you don't know. And it's equally easy for them to demonize you. Why not go and help show them that you too are a type of person who they would like to be friends with. You think about the gay rights movement and how much it was aided by the coming out of the cause of movement so people could say, you know what, I know that guy. That guy is my cousin and he's gay and I think he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Think about the same with vegans. Yet, how many of us are providing a great example of an ambassador of vegans? Are we being friendly and open or are we condemning them? Are we keeping ourselves so insular that if you don't fit our little purity litmus test that you're not going to be part of the in-group and you're going to get attacked? That is the type of thing that I think we need to ask ourselves as we move forward because animals don't have time for us to sit and divide lines and talk about us versus them. What they need for us is to create a new transformed world for them and we cannot do it ourselves. We have to broaden our circle. We have to bring anybody who can help us move the ball forward, progress down the field, and progress does beget progress and will ultimately build a new world step by step for animals. Thank All right. you.